to spend some time looking at functions that allow us to round and remove decimals. I've got my numbers down the side here that I'm going to convert using these functions across the top. Uh, these, these formulas are appearing as they are in these cells because I'm using the formula text function that basically displays the formula in the cell beneath. So if we start with integer, what that does is just remove the decimal point and then round down to the next lowest integer. So 2.5 becomes 10 and minus 1.49 becomes minus 2. So it's rounding down. Even rounds away from 0 to the next even integer. So if we took 2.5, that's rounded away from 0 to 4. And if we take minus 1.49, that's rounded away from 0 to minus 2. Odd rounds away from 0 to the next odd integer. So 6 becomes 7, 15 becomes 14, minus 1.49 becomes minus 3. Trunk. Now what trunk does is just remove the decimal portion of a value. No rounding is done. So 2.5 becomes 2. Uh, minus 1.49 becomes minus 1. If you um, put a value in the second argument in the trunk um, function, um, you can increase the precision of that function. So I've said comma 1, so that will allow there to be a decimal after, uh, one decimal place in the value. You could put 2, 3, 4 or whatever, but it essentially does the same as what trunk has done. If you put minus 1, what that does is actually kind of work the other way from the decimal point. Um, so, for example, 6 became 0 and 14 became 10 or 187 became 180. So, the digit to the left of the decimal place uh, gets converted to a 0. And obviously, you can change that minus 1 to minus 2 or whatever. Now, uh, this is the round function is kind of like classic rounding, what you were taught in school. So values up to 0.4999 are reoccurring, are rounded towards zero. So for example, uh, 2.4999 is converted to 2. Uh, 1.499 is converted to 1. Uh, but 2.5, because that's over that threshold, is converted to 3. It works the same with negative figures, uh, <coughs> rounding towards zero. Now, um, let's look at um, uh, round, but with this extra argument, a bit like we did with the trunk. Um, so that uh, allows one decimal place. So 2.4999 became 2.5. Um, 1.4999 became minus 1.5 just allows a decimal place works the same as round otherwise uh, minus one that's just a bit like what we did with the trunk with the minus one um, you can see here that six has been converted to a 10 and 14 has con been converted to 10 um, and 187 has been converted to 190 so unlike trunk which would have converted to 180 it has rounded um, the figure. Now round up rounds away from zero to the next integer. So um, we've got our values here. Let's have a look. Uh, 187.67 has been rounded away from zero to 188. Um, minus 1.499 has been rounded away from zero to two. Uh, round up with the one on it would just allow another decimal place like we've seen before. Uh, round up minus one will again uh, work the other way from the decimal point as you can see there, 10, 20, etc. Round down kind of works the other way, rounds towards zero to the next integer. So as we look down here, towards zero, 2.5 becomes two, 1.49 becomes one, a one minus 1.499 becomes minus one. And then I've also added this extra argument, which adds another decimal point. And you could also put a minus sign there as well to kind of work the other way, uh, the decimal point left of the decimal point. Okay, so those are the different ways of removing 
decimals and rounding. Now, there's another function called mround, which I'll show in a different scenario. Basically, uh, what we've got here is we've got some wholesale prices uh, that we've added the markup to. So we get these strange retail prices, 237.75. That's not too bad, that one, but 912.10. Now, really, what we want to do is say, you know, we either want it to be 0.25 or 0.5 or 0.75 or 0, whatever. We don't want these strange uh, pinces here. So we can use m round to achieve that. So what we do, we'd say equals m round. The number we're interested in, comma, and then I could say if I just wanted 50 or round pounds, I could put 0.5 in. But if I was happy with 25 pence, 50 pence, 75 pence, and round pounds, I could put in uh, 0.25. So if I confirm that, you can see that. That one's already that one's already at 75. But if I copy those down now, you can see that it's gone to the nearest 25 pence. So uh, 912 uh, and 10 pence has gone down to 912 a round pound. Uh, the 13 pence has gone to the 25 because it's the nearest uh, 25. Now ceiling of floor. Uh, let's look at this example. So I've got my party shopping list. It's my beer, my wine, my crackers, and my chips. This is how much I've estimated I'm going to need. 56 beers of can, 13 bottles of wine, 30 uh, crackers and 25 packets of crisps. Now I could only order in boxes. So there's 12 uh, cans uh, when I order beer, uh, 6 in a box of wine, 24 cr crackers in a box of crackers and 12 in a bag, 12 little bags of crisps in a bag of crisps. So um, I can't get those exact amounts, so I need to work out what I'm going to get to make sure I get at least these amounts. So what I would use is something called ceiling math. So what I can say is, is I need to order that amount, but um, the quantity in the box, the, um, the rate at which I can order them is in that um, sell there so that actually tells me that I will get 60 I can copy that down and you can see I'm going to get 18 there um, two sixes won't quite make it so I have to order another six uh, you can see what it's doing there so um, I've then decided what I've actually used this is after the party so I use 30 there so a bit of an overestimation there on how much I would need and uh, so this is my quantity not consumed so uh, luckily I can return items as long as I can return a full box or whatever so I need to work out how many I can return and to do that I can use something called floor math so what I'm saying is this is the amount I can return but I have to return it in quantities of 12 um, full boxes so I press that and I can see I can return 24 there that makes sense doesn't it there's boxes of 12 uh, 26 not consumed so there's going to be two left over copy that down I can't return any of these because it has to be in quantities of 6 and 24 but with this one I can return one box is worth so 12 items there so floor kind of works the opposite way to ceiling